I feel like it cannot be compared to other Need for Speeds. Content, I mean, racing-wise, content-wise, yes, but it is very, very arcade-like. I feel like the driving is very assisted, and I feel like I don't really have to do much. Um, the drifting is heavily assisted. Hey, kids. Uh, One of my hold contacts on. says there's some abandoned cars lying around Fortune Valley. Some kind of house deal gone wrong, maybe. Anyhow, if you find them, why don't you bring them around to the airfield? Anyways, um... Oh Tyler. my gosh. Hey, Ty, it's Rav. I need Mac to pick something up for me. I think he'll like it. Let him know when you see him. Anyways, um... This game is very assisted when it comes to the driving, which is fun for arcade-like feel. Uh, I didn't buy this game for a racing sim, or else I'd be playing Forza 7, Mot Motorsport 7. Um, this game is on a league on its own when it comes to uh, story, because it is very, very cheap. Um, you can compare it to Need for Speed 2015 if you wanted to, but 2015 was more, for me at least, it was more of a cringy uh, teenager's racing dream but this is more a, of a of a crew style campaign but very cheesy if that makes sense and the crew was cheesy too but this was even cheesier like one liners and uh, different like just cliches from movies and things like that but the customization I think is very good it's very well done just like underground 2 with a mix of 2015. Um, 2015 was alright. Uh, the game was weird. I wouldn't call it a need for speed. Um, it's a... This game is a lot better than 2015. Uh, what it does better is obviously customization, but it's very similar, and I'll show you soon. The game... Does run, does run well too. I don't, I can't tell you the frames, but for some reason it feels like it it performs better than most Need for Speed games that I've played because uh, I think this is Xbox One X enhanced, so that gives it the performance boost that you really need. Not that I'm trying to run this game at full graphics or something, but. Along for the customization, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so the wide body kits and all that stuff is back, um, which I really liked. So the the biggest addition I feel like this game has from the other games are you can you can change things just like an underground too, like you got your tail lights and your headlights, but it's not to the same degree as the old games. You only change the color. Um, but what it does good is allowing you to choose parts that seem good to you. Like the, like the body kits in Underground 2, you were limited to what types there were, and you had to choose a type that you liked. But for this, you can choose almost anything that you want, really. Um, you can just mix. You can mix and match body kits, which I think is really nice. Like the fenders here, you got the uh, the regular ones which are beautiful as it is. I mean, this Porsche is one of my favorite cars. And then you have, uh, like, a stylish one with some decal and a, and a little scoop in there. Or you can get the wide body kit. 
uh, by Alchemist. But another problem that I have is sometimes when you mix and match, it just doesn't look good. Um, I feel like this would only be good on, on a stock one without the fenders, which for some reason I can't change the fenders. I think it might be in the hood. Yeah, it is in the hood. Okay, so right there you see it's stock and then you got wide uh, as you go along. So you do get a chance to mix and match as you like, which I've said already. So you're not limited to just a few items. Um, you can even customize your sound system, which I, I can't prove enhances it. Maybe it's for interior looks, I'm not sure. Um, let me show you on some of the more uh, street-ish cars. Perfect example is my, um, my RX-7. I love this dang car. Um, RX-7 is highly customizable. I mean, pretty much all the cars in here are highly customizable. But like, you have your stock parts, obviously, and then you have um, additions like straight pipe. Where's straight pipe? Like, this is supposed to be the straight pipe, I think. Uh, this does have a really low and back exhaust. But like, I usually go for the big bore. <laughs> never, never this. This reminds me of Saints Row stuff. So they have pretty much something for everybody. Um, this wide body kit is pretty nice. But it's not, not the type that I like. I like the, the Rocket Bunny or the LB, Liberty Walk type stuff. So, with that said, the visual pieces are like this. You got um, different types of nitrous, which I would put green nitrous on this thing, but I'm already using it for my Porsche 918. Uh, you can change your tire smoke, like in Grand Theft Auto, which I think is pretty cool. This game does it much better than Grand Theft Auto. It's much more vibrant. Um, your underglow, even your horn, you can't test it, as far as I know. Um, and your air suspension, for when you turn your car off, it even lowers. You got your stance tuning as well. You can change the angles of the front and rear. And, of course, just the car height in general. Um, they have cars for everybody in this game. They have supercars, sports cars, uh, project cars. Um, and, hold on. Let me put this in storage. One of my favorite cars in this game has got to be the, the Fair Lady. Now... What sold me on this game was that all drag cars can do wheelies. I love Forza, Forza Horizon, and Forza Motorsport, but um, as the newer games have come out, it's almost impossible to do wheelies without rigging your tuning to where your front wheels have no PSI and they just bounce. Like right now, I have the car turned off. <laughs> And if I just barely tap the gas, you can already see that I'm just going for it. I would recommend playing this game on, a, on manual transmission, but it is very hard to adjust because I feel like the speedometer, since it's color-coded like that, is uh, not, not, not good for me. So sometimes I play an automatic when I'm just trying to have fun. Uh, but when I'm really just trying to cruise around, I'll change it to manual. So, let's see what this thing can do. I really like this car so much. Um, it is one of the project cars in this game, so you can uh, upgrade it. Not all cars have this much customization. Um, for example, the big engine on the top, you cannot do that to every car. Only the cars that are called, was it Direlex? Or Direlex? I don't know how you say that. Um, once you reach level 300 on a car, it gets you can upgrade it like this. 
same with the the Mustang that I have and uh, the, that Chevy truck that I was working on in there. I'll take you to a tuning shop for something I like in this game that most people don't. Okay, so it has a card system. If you've ever played The Crew um, upon release, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Crew recently or had an update sometime after release, I think about a year after release maybe, to where it made the card system very wonky and weird. But anyways, the card system in this game is well, just as you see it. You have your head, your block, ECU, gearbox, exhaust, and turbo. And there are different brands for each. And if the more brands you have, you'll get a boost. Like down there, it says three times Outlaw. It's because I have almost all my parts on Outlaw. Um, you can buy these parts straight out, and they all have different traits, such as nitrous, jump, acceleration, speed. All those things on the left, you'll see, those are all the different things you can get, like speed, acceleration, nitrous, jump, and braking. And you can customize your car how you feel, which I think is cool. Um... So, for example, I can put this on there, and it'll increase my air time, which I don't really need with this car. Or I can put this, and it'll increase my brake power, because it has brakes. There's always the trade-in system, which I don't have any trade-in parts right now. But I can always uh, break this piece that I don't want, and trade it in for some uh, tokens. So, let's say, okay, so I want an Outlaw ECU. But acceleration and speed is what I really want. So I have a situation here. I want an ECU so I can choose ECU. I want Outlaw so I can choose Outlaw. Or I can choose acceleration or speed. But I can only choose one of those and lock it in for a roll. So to get the best results, I'm just going to go for an Outlaw piece. Because there's already a 3 times boost. Brakes, jump, and nitrous. Okay. I lose one top speed, but I keep my nitrous, and my acceleration goes up, and so does my horsepower. My brake goes up. My airtime doesn't really matter, but my car improves. So this is the part I was talking about when your car reaches level 300. Right up on the top left, it says, uh, behind the new picture, it says level 330, drag. Drag is the type of car that I have. It's level 330, and this piece is better than mine, so it goes up by 6. So I can equip it, trade it in, or send it to a garage. Um, I wouldn't recommend selling it because it sells for like 10% of the price that you can actually buy it for. So you can always send it to the garage or trade it in. Trade in will give you one piece, and you need three pieces to do um, the roll. So I'm just going to equip this piece here and just roll with it. So that's generally about what the game is. Um, I've already beaten the story mode. Uh, story mode is really cool. And there is a diff difficulty setting, which is kind of new for Need for Speed. Um, usually it's just it gets harder as you go along. But I guess EA has felt sympathetic for some people who aren't really good at racing games, who don't main racing games. So there is an easy, medium, and hard setting. I recommend playing on medium because easy is way too easy and hard can be really, really, really hard. Now, the cops are in this game, but you have to... They aren't, they aren't in free roam. You have to do a certain event called Runner. And the Runner cars are basically really, really heavy modified cars, which I'll show you here in a second. So there's Race... Drift, Drag, Off-Road, Runner, and Speed Cross. I don't have any Speed Cross cars yet. Um, I'm not really sure what that is, but I'll look into it uh, later. So, Runner cars are really cool. They are the cars that 
uh, allow you to outrun the cops. Um, I really, really, really do like this Infinity Q, uh, Q60 that was given to me for free for the limited edition or pre-order bonus. I can't remember. Uh, this Porsche is really, really low level, but I want to choose it just because it looks cool. <laughs> I love uh, Rough Weld. So let's leave this place, and I'll have to show you what the cops are like. Cops, um, they can be found in free roam, but it's an event, like I said. You have to either go into a level where you have to choose a runner car, and you switch characters to the runner person. Miller. Hey Jeff, it's Raph. I need Mac to pick something up for me. I think he'll like it. Let him know when you see him. So, the um, runner missions are usually found around here in the city. They are the blue ones. Each event is corresponded for each car. Drag is yellow, uh, blue is runner, and so on. Um, but you can find, if you're lucky, you can drive around and find little cargo crates. Like there's one here. I'll go to it. Uh, and fast travel is really nice, but it costs you money, but it's very little money. Um, the little cargo crates I'm talking about, you can actually find. Um, and what they do is they make you a wanted criminal, I guess. Uh, like you're stealing something. It's called a bait crate. And uh, if you escape the cops, you have to keep it and open it. And usually there's like, I don't know, like a speed card in there or something. Miller. Yes. I don't have much time. Broker? You okay? I'm on a flight to Japan. The collector bolted the second your friend Morgan went Oh away. gosh, spoilers! Ah! Cold. Wherever he's headed, it has something to do with Arkwright. And I'm gonna find out what. We'll meet again someday, Miller. Alright, well, enjoy that spoiler. I guess I have to put spoiler in the title now, huh? I did not expect that. So, what you do is you collect this crate. And I'm gonna guess you have about 10 seconds to leave before they get onto you. Or maybe two seconds, which he just spawned there. Uh, I think it's a Mustang or a Charger cup, I'm not sure. But they do change Whatever. with what type of car you have. And it's basically a time trial. I really messed that up. So, like, your screen will flash like that whenever they're close to catching you. So with runner cars, they are very, they seem very slow. I'm going 90 miles per hour, which is pretty dang fast. I mean, it's for real life. Um, 
they do have a heavy chassis on them, so they do seem very slow and they do handle very weird. That is my biggest complaint about runner cars. Um, but luckily there's a way to change that and I'll show you after this. So what happens is you get to select a speed car at the end of each race that you win and bait crate. Doesn't really matter which one you go, I just choose whichever one and hope for the best. So that gives me a 10 and brakes. That kind of sucks. Um, it, a 10 is better than a 7. So, whatever. So anyways, you press down the D-pad, at least for my control scheme, and you get live tuning for every car. Stability control, I always keep off, and just because why not. So chassis reinforcement. Uh, the stronger the chassis, the um, more damage you'll do to cops and the less that they'll do to you. You don't have health like you need for speed, revenge, or whatever that thing is called. I, I can't remember. Rivals, I don't, I don't know. There's so many need for, need for speeds. Um, so in need for speed rivals, you do have a health bar just like in uh, Hot Pursuit 2012. And um, they can total you. And here you can't. They just uh, arrest you like in need for speed uh, most wanted 2005. But uh, if you have a lightweight chassis, your car does kind of shift as you saw. Or at least it's supposed to. It's supposed to shift. There it goes. The weight goes up and down. In the lightweight, you go. You actually go a little faster, but you are more susceptible to be rammed and totaled. And when I say totaled, I mean they just wreck you. Literally, they wreck you into something, and uh, you get busted. You'll just brush them off. If you have a strong chassis. I usually keep it around. Uh, pretty strong, but not all the way because I do like to have some speed Like my quarter mile improves by a, a whole second and Then some if I have it on lightweight and for steering I have to keep it in middle. It depends on the car as well um, This might be a myth, but I've heard that uh, wide cars do have a problem with turning like for example my wide body kit makes my toe on the car more uh, more wide so it's harder for me to turn but I can't prove that this car feels very slow and draggy which is fine I guess it's not my best car but I do like it because I like uh, old Porsches specifically ones from the 80s So, anyways, let's go back to the garage. Um, there is an abandoned car available, which I can make a separate video on that if you want to. I can make it a project car for the subscribers. Uh, people can choose different parts and liveries, colors, wheels, things like that to to put on the car. And we can choose what to put put it into, drag, drift, or whatever. So if you're interested in that, I, I will make a, a subscriber project car. Or maybe multiple, even. So, um, anyways, I'm going to go back to the garage. There are a bunch of garages. I think there are four garages you can choose from. Um, and my favorite one is the airfield, which is which you start out at. As long as you uh, buy all garages, you'll have infinite storage. Which I think is pretty nice of them to do that. Because in 2015, you could only have, like, what, eight cars or something? Which was very ridiculous. Um, the really cool cars, my favorite cars, are the old cars. Um, I do appreciate uh, ricers and tuners a lot. I just love the Honda S2000 as well. It's one of my lowest ranked cars, but it'll get up there. So, another big issue with the customization is, once you get into the supercar range, all your cars become outdated. If you don't upgrade your car to a supercar, you'll be left behind. For example, my Mazda RX-7, 272. Uh, 300 is about where you want to be after you beat the game, or before you beat the game, right before you beat the game. I was I was racing people that were 300, and I was keeping up, but until I got to the levels where they were using supercars like Lamborghinis and, uh, and uh, Porsches, and that was just way too hard for me. Um, when I say Porsches, I mean the new Porsches, not the old ones. Because I know someone's going to be technical about what classifies as sports and super. 
I think that the 918 is even a hypercar, but I'm not sure. So you're going to have to upgrade eventually, which is a big problem. Um, and this is what I'm talking about when the game gets really easy. Like, it assists you. Drifting is very, very assisted, which can actually make it even harder. I know that contradicts what I just said. But if you live-tune your car to how you will like it, then it shouldn't be a problem. This car, especially, is really assisted. Hey, Mac. I need your help. Mind picking something up for me? You know I'm always down. It's something you'll like. Sending you the info. That sounds weird. Anyways, so this car is very assisted. I'll show you. I'll start driving and I'll turn. Just a little bit. It puts me... If I, if I stop turning, it straightens out. Which I don't like that. For a drift car, why would I want to be straight in there? I know, you might not be able to see it, but I really feel it. If I, especially if I turn just a little bit. I don't like it. Anyways, drifting can be really fun. Especially if you live tune it how you want. This is how I like my cars to be. Because you can just straight up drift anywhere. The e-brake is very strong. And you can pretty much do anything. out for me. I hate that. It can really mess you up if you don't really know when it, when it'll fix it for you. I feel like it's really heavily assisted on the Lamborghini Huracan. All my other drifting cars didn't have that problem. So anyways, that's my really long review, <laughs> oh my gosh, almost 30 minutes of Need for Speed Payback. Um, so I can do a subscriber or viewer, you don't really have to be subscribed, whatever, viewer, subscriber, uh, projects car. I think that'll be pretty fun and give me something to do in this game because once you beat it, it's just driving around. It's like after you beat GTA, there's not really much to do. Unless you like to play tennis and go to your psychiatrist or whatever. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. and um, I hope that you learned something from this. And if not, you probably watched a YouTuber review it in less than three minutes. <laughs>